What is up? It's your boy Johnny Shreve. I have BB Promise to tell like it is. Welcome back to the episode of the podcast Uncut, guys. We're going to talk about some advanced training techniques that will help take your training to the next level, or at least understanding how to use these training techniques, or what I would like to call them um, set intensifiers. We're going to talk about these ones supersets, rest pause, mile reps, and drop sets. So each of these have good, you know, each of these methods have its place and unique benefits and drawbacks. So I'm going to discuss with you guys on how to use them effectively. So let's start off with supersets. So you guys probably uh, probably already used supersets before, but just to give you guys a breakdown of supersets, those are beginners maybe, or need a fresh up on this. Supersets are, are basically like exercise, you know, two exercises performed back to back with no break. You know, beginner, you go to the gym, you're doing eight to 10 reps, three sets, eight, to 10 reps with a, you know, two or three second negative, one second positive, just a basic bare bones, that would be a straight set. Those types of set intense fires do have their unique benefits and drawbacks. So I want to make sure I go over this with you guys thoroughly so you guys can understand how to use them effectively. So let's start off with the supersets. So obviously guys, supersets made them before for those of you who are brand new. A superset is basically doing two exercises back to back with no rest, right? Typically you want to use an opposing muscle group. You would want to do say like a push, you know, supersetting a push and a pull. You can superset a push and a push like chest press with flies. You can, but really I wouldn't recommend that because if you're trying to really maximize your chest growth, you know, within that kind of movement, prioritizing that movement itself, I wouldn't superset the same muscle group. So you want to superset opposing muscle groups. Now, what's going to be beneficial about this is going to obviously raise your heart rate a lot. And, you know, it can definitely easily help you guys for some time. So, you know, if you're looking at, you know, supersets, I'm looking at implementing those with, you know, a say like a four day upper lower split, right? So upper day one, then you have your leg day one, then you have your upper day two and your leg day two. And your upper day one would be super setting, say like bench or, you know, not bench, but you know, um, look at my kid did, man. <laughs> Yo. So basically your upper body, you would do, you know, a chest movement, a back movement, another chest movement, a back movement, you know, it could be like a inclined chest and then a vertical pull and then a, little higher incline press and then a row and then it could be a fly and then a, another type of row and then you could do buys and tries buys and tries like that and then you have your leg day one and then your upper day two would be you know maybe shoulders and back you know same idea you know and then again you know biceps and tries buys and tries then you would do your leg day two now again you can also use that mostly would be in like you know, a full body split, you know, so like a three days a week, full body workout, supersets are great to use. Now, when we're talking about supersets or any of these sets, any of these sets, set intensifiers, we want to make sure that the, there's a couple of variables that there, that never change, right? Number one is technique. Number two is tempo. So whatever your superset is, you know, if you're doing a superset of whatever exercise, your reps and tempo should stay the same with each exercise. You shouldn't change your tempo on a superset just because you're getting tired or something from the first exercise. I don't know. Regardless, if you want to maximize using any set intensifier, make sure that you're keeping your range of motion, technique, all that the same, and then your tempo the same, right? Now, when it comes to this, for those of you who are you know, lacking in the cardio area, fix your cardio. This is gonna be challenging when it comes to cardio. And two, it's like, when do you use supersets? What would you superset? What moves would you superset? Like again, we're trying to superset opposing muscle groups, right? So having said that, let's move on to the next one. So drop sets. So what are drop sets? Very simple, but there's a lot of things in drop sets that I find people overlook or um, don't pay attention to. Now we're looking at drop sets. Basically you're doing a set to failure and then immediately you're dropping the weight, you're decreasing the weight and then doing another set right after that to failure. Now you can do a, you know, if you say, um, say you had uh, your training plan, you get is, you know, three drop sets of 10 to 15 reps, then you're doing 
that, right? You're doing just a drop set. Now you can have a, you know, three double drop sets. That means you would have three drop sets within that one set. Now, again, when it comes to this, you want to keep the tempo the same. So give you a really good example. If we're doing, since I'm just looking at you guys right now, we're doing, we're doing, uh, we're doing machine press. We have to happen to be sitting down like this because it's easier like this, right? So I'm here, I'm doing, you know, a double, I'm doing a drop set of 10 to 15 reps. Now, again, when it comes to the tempo and range of motion and the load, right? We want to keep, in, keep things consistent. So, you know, your 10 to 15 reps, you're going to do, you know, they should last about 30 to 45, 50 seconds if you get the max range or, you know, if you fail at the max end of the reps or you fail at the 10. Again, you're trying to go to failure or very close to failure, right? So you're here, you know, you got 10 reps and you're, you're at eight and you're like, oh, right? 1,001 and then nine, 10, 11, you know, 1,001 and then two, then 12, right? And then that was what, and then uh, uh, 13, you know, you're probably going to like not get 15, right? Or maybe try and, you know, maybe barely get up. Either way, you, you put the weight down and then you drop it, you know, 10 to 20%. That's what we want to do. And then again, it goes down to the same tempo again. We're not going to drop it 10 to 20%. And then you're going to go from this really good, clean, awesome reps to this like maybe short change like oh let's just get it done because i see that happen a lot i see i see this happen with drop sets i see i see this happen with rest pause i see it happen with mile reps and that comes from my clients that i have to you know correct them in in those movements you do not change the tempo or the range of motion or the technique that is the thing that stays the complete same right now great 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 um, set intensifier, very common one to use. When do we use these? When do we not use these? So when it comes to drop sets, you know, you really want to just like be in a place where you can drop the set really quickly. The whole point of this is to be very quick to drop right away and get into it. So doing like drop sets with like, I don't know, deadlifts or back squats or I don't know, bench press, like, you know, um, you know, yeah, free weight barbell bench right Ugh, then you're you're getting off and then you're taking the plates off it doesn't make any sense right then you're getting yourself too tired to even do that so i'm looking at taking this and using them in more selectorized pin loaded machines right something that you can you know change really quickly and move on and get on with it right again i'm not doing this with free weights whatsoever it just doesn't make any sense that's basically that when it comes to drop sets right now when it comes to drop sets as well too, you can always overdo drop sets, right? Find, do do what makes sense, right? So doing a double drop set, like if you did like a, a double drop set or like a triple drop set, you don't have to do four sets, right? If you did four double, four triple drop sets, it's like, no, that makes no sense, right? You know, maybe doing like a, you know, three sets, three double, three drop sets right you just dropping a set each one that's not that bad right so like get to the like understand when you're starting to kick a dead horse all right and anyway, let's move on we're going to talk about now rest pause now rest pause and mile reps very similar and they could get confused uh sometimes so here's how i'm going to explain this you're looking at a rest pause rest pause can be similar to almost clusters in terms of how long the rest is and then how many reps are doing after so if you're looking at like a rest pause basically rest pause is you know do it taking a little short break in between your you know right after your set to be able to rep out as many reps as you can to failure with the same weight right you're not gonna in, you're not gonna decrease the weight you're not gonna drop the weight down right so let's just say you have you know a set of eight to ten reps and you fail at in between eight to 10 reps. You take a break, you know, the, you know, put the weight down, put the weight down. That was dumb anyway. You put the weight down, relax for a bit, and then you rep out the same weight again until failure. You can do a, a rest pause set. You can do a double rest pause, whatever, right? So, but that's what basically rest pause is, right? Taking a quick little break in between and then not decreasing the weight and then repping out to failure again, right? This is a technique that I like to use if I'm, you know, if I'm looking to gain some strength, you know, while I'm in this pursuit of, you know, 
um, hypertrophy, right? So, you know, the re- and the reason being is your body's getting used to lifting that weight. So right. while you, you know, take your break, you're just letting your body catch up, you know, and you let the lactic acid kind of simmer down a bit, and then you're bang out the same weight again for as much as you can do, which is going to force your body to adapt to lifting that weight, right? So that's a great movement to do again when it comes to doing rest pause. I can, you know, doing rest pause with machines, select our machines and plate loaded because you have a little bit of time to kind of rest, right? You know, you can just sit there. It's easy. You know, you don't have to decrease the weight. You can just sit and that's it, right? You can not, not really sit and that's it, but you don't get what I'm saying, right? You don't have to get up and change anything. So all you have to do is basically focus on catching your breath and getting it. So like, let's just say bench press, like free weight bench press is not a bad idea. Again, having a spotter, with you is key, right? That's why a lot of these things you want to do in selectorized machines, right? So doing that rest pause is really good. Now, when it comes to rest pause as well, too, what can affect you with rest pause? And that's not necessarily the set itself, but it could be the supporting muscles that can get tired before the big muscle group gets tired. So like, say for instance, let's talk about like, you know, if you're doing ladder raises or something, I don't know, right? Uh, yeah, it could be a lot. Anything you're holding, anything when you're, there could be even pull-ups, whatever, anything where you have to hold something, your forearms could gas out before, you know, your back does or before your shoulders do, right? So just think about that when you're, when you're looking at doing um, rest pause, right? And understanding the difference between that and my rep. Now, taking, let's walking into my reps, segueing away into my reps. My reps is basically this, right? You're going to find a weight that you are going to fail at. You're gonna do like all these set intensifiers, you're obviously gonna do your warm ups and whatnot and blah, blah, blah. But once you get there with my reps, so we're talking about my reps here, you want to find a weight that's going to bring you to failure or close to it between 10 to 20 reps, right? So for instance, you did your warm up, you're doing hamstring curls, you guys probably seen me do this with Doc Mike, right? So you do hamstring curls and you find a weight and your again, here are your parameters, here are your variables. Four range of motion, great technique, and time and attention, and your you know consistent tempo, right? So you're doing hamstring curls, full extension, full flexion. That's your parameters. Once you cannot get full extension and full flexion, then you put the weight down, and that's how you fail. So say you got 10 to 20 reps for your first try, your go at it and you can't continue consistently to get full range of motion and you end up stopping at 14 reps, right? The next set you do, you're probably not gonna be able to do the full 14 reps consistently, right? So you basically take a break and then you bang out the reps again until you hit your maximum amount of reps, make sense? So again, this is another one that's it's very close to a rest pause, but again, this is a very, very good one to do for, you know, increasing muscle, muscle um, strength as well too. But again, it's going to help build muscle in general. You're just giving yourself the most benefit and muscle stimulus to be able to grow some muscle, right? To, to stimulate muscle growth. Now, again, this is a very taxing thing as well too. You can definitely tax the nervous system just like you can when it comes to um, rest pause. Partly, partly because you're not decreasing the weight. You're not decreasing the load to kind of give your, your your nervous system a little break from the weight. But as well as like, again, you're going from the same amount of weight and then you're putting your all into that same amount of weight again. So you can definitely tax yourself um, more than you need. So understanding to get to the point where if you're getting to, you know, if you're doing mile reps and your reps are becoming less than five, that's when you know you're not really doing anything beneficial, but just taxing yourself um, all the way. So again, when you're using mile reps, I wouldn't do mile reps doing squats. You know what I mean? Like leg extensions, um, hack squats, you know, not probably the most beneficial thing to do that. Um, deadlifts, pull-ups, you know, you're gonna get like other, other supporting muscles will probably gas up before you can even perform the proper amount of reps when you take that second go at it right and again like when you're looking at it like no one's trying to 
do a mile wrap with squats. I seen that like I seen uh, when I was looking at the, trying to get the, the full definition of mile reps to make sure I get this right. I was watching a video of Mike's and I'm like, yeah, doing a mile rep with free weight back squats would probably be the stupidest thing to do. Like absolutely stupid, right? And obviously with deadlifts, stuff like that, you know, um, belt squats, like not the, not the best thing because again, you don't want to. We're not trying to annihilate ourselves we're using these these you know set intensifiers to you know add a little more nuance to your training in terms of like you know increasing the intensity obviously but you know some muscle groups can adhere to that kind of poundage more than others right doing you know mile reps or something with like you know bicep curl you know biceps or triceps those you know those um accessory muscles flies i think they'll be great to use uh, really really great techniques to use so you know that's basically it though these are most like when it comes down to it when it comes to programming i use a lot of these when it comes to my training supersets i i will only really implement if i'm in a rush literally and that's the only time i do use those apart from that i do drop sets um i do drop sets rest pause and my reps those are in my programming and you'll see a lot more of that in my programming too when we track my progress to the masters olympia anyway that is it guys for you today hope you guys can use that to give you a little more clarification on how to use set intensifiers drop sets supersets rest pause my reps right use those guys try them. i'm gonna try and bring you guys a little bit more to the channel so we can you know we can increase your overall training intensity and your overall knowledge of training. We can grow together so you guys have more to your arsenal. You got more in your your toolbox when it comes to training, right? And anyway, guys, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoy the video and make sure you guys use these techniques. Also, guys, make sure you guys watch these videos popping up. And until next time, guys, you know how it is. Iron Sharp is Iron. Progressive Overload Your Life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.